Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, gorgeous day here in paradise in the end times here in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this gorgeous spring Sunday morning, May 14th, 2017, which is of course Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Good God Almighty, I could sit here and rant all day about various aspects of Mother's Day. But I notice it's been like three years since I have done my broken record Mother's Day Roses rant. Well, roses and every other goddamn planet eating cut flower. Uh, you, you, you know, I, I just. The, the, the cut flower industry is, is right up there with the cruise ship industry as one of the most indefensible assaults on Mother Earth. The, if you're looking for the most indefensible, clueless fucking moron way to slap Mother Nature in the face, what you will do is, is participate on any level in the global industrial cut flower uh, industry. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put my own little cut flower down here and I, I could just start anywhere. What we're going to do is we're just going to Google environmental effects of Mother's Day roses. This is just the first screen that comes up. How many uh, hits do you get if you Google this? Let's see. Well, 211,000 results. Environmental effects of Mother's Day roses. Okay, this is, and, and, and I'm just going to go down the list of headlines and then we're going to uh, pick one. Pick one, get it? <clears throat> Scientific American blooms away the real price of flowers. And another one from Scientific American. Roses raise environmental concerns. We're going to go to the independent the environmental impact of our hunger for roses. Elux magazine, not pretty, the environmental impact of flowers. Here is Policy Forum. Love hurts environmental risks in the cut flower industry. Here is, I don't know who this is, what are the environmental cost of flowers. Here is from the Guardian. Growing roses harming Kenya's ecological sites. The good old Huffington Post. Eco etiquette. What is the environmental cost of cut flowers? And bringing up the bottom, and we'll just pick this one out. A rose is not a rose from Audubon Magazine. Uh, I need to check in more often with Audubon Magazine. A rose is not a rose. Long the symbol of love, irresistible desire, and ephemeral beauty, the prickliest of flowers has never been so popular so lucrative or so toxic for the environment. Oh God, then he, he starts out, this writer, Charles Bergman, starts out down there in, in Ecuador, in a Cayambe, Ecuador, I have seen the absolute ecological carnage in Cayambe, Ecuador many times. If anybody wants to see the collapse of a planet, 
they need to go no further than a flower farm, particularly a rose farm in Cayambe, Ecuador, truly uh, one of the ninth rings of hell. And, uh, Jesus. Uh, so they're looking down. Okay, let's get into the, the facts of the story. He, he starts out with this long description of the environmental horror of just one rose farm. <clears throat> the bigger picture. Every year, Americans buy about one and a half billion roses, <clears throat> almost all of them from Latin America, about 900 million from Colombia and 400 million from Ecuador. Flowers have become the third pillar of Ecuador's economy, behind only, obviously, oil, oil and bananas. More than 90% of Ecuador's blooms are exported primarily to the U.S., yet virtually, virtually every rose is really an industrial product treated with pesticides and fungicides by a commercial farm before making its way to your mother. Uh, the petals and pesticides story is retold every, well they're talking about Valentine's Day, but you can substitute Mother's Day for Valentine's Day. The petals and pesticides story is retold every Mother's Day and it came home forcefully to me in the fumigation and the dead fish. Oh, Jesus. And of course the people who, the people who suffer the most as a result of our rose buying consumer habits are the rose workers in the greenhouses and the environment in the places where they work. As I looked at the dead fish floating in a pond in Ecuador, I found myself wondering if I could ever buy a rose for my mother again. Yes, uh, anyway, this is a long, uh, in-depth article. Uh, I was surprised when he started researching this, I was surprised at how little clear information, statistics, and studies is available about the environmental impacts of flowers in Latin America, especially the amount of pesticides used in Ecuador. Growers are supposed to register their chemicals, but the records are elusive. Uh, plus the marketing contraband is said to be huge. Uh, Jesus. Uh, before visiting Cayambe, I had asked an expert in Andean agriculture about the witch's brew of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides used in the flower industry. This is Gregory Knapp, a uh, professor from good old University of Texas at Austin, uh, and a Fulbright scholar. Quote, it is a crisis of chemicals, meaning the, the toxic stew of this completely unregulated planet-eating shit. Quote, it is a crisis of chemicals. Nobody really knows the quantity of pesticides. Almost all are imported, but a large amount Perhaps even the majority is brought in under the radar. Uh, the key environmental problem with uh, this flower farming here have to do with the intense use of pesticides, close quote. A 2007 study by the International Labor Rights Fund in the U.S labor education in the Americas Project found that Ecuadorian flower companies 
use 30 different pesticides and that 20% of those chemicals applied in flower production down there in Latin America are restricted or banned in the United States and Europe. Uh, so then he's talking about, uh, good God, uh, you, you know how these fuckers just, just dump uh, all of these pesticides just just right there in the river and then he talks about uh, it, it, this it, it goes on and on guys uh, you know when you're driving around Ecuador I, I, I mean I'm talking good God I, I mean as far as the eye can see the the giant fucking uh, commercial greenhouses, which are very shoddily built. They're just a bunch of uh, posts in the ground, which are, you know, uh, the posts are come from the, the Amazon jungle just down the hill, and then they wrap these things with these giant rolls of plastic. You know what I'm talking about. The, that, that, the big ass sheets. Uh, I mean, Beyond, if you've never seen this with your own eyes, you cannot imagine what I'm talking about. And, and this shit is good for maybe one or two seasons, and then the wind rips it up and just and just tatters it. And, and I mean the entire countryside around uh, Ecuador and Colombia, thousands and thousands of, of scorched earth acres covered up with this shredded plastic and all of this bullshit. And of course, you know, then, uh, then then all of these damn things have to be stored in these refrigerated warehouses, and then they get on these goddamn airplanes and flown to the U.S., and then they get in these goddamn refrigerated trucks, and <sighs> it's hopeless, guys. Anyway. I'm done.